What's up everyone? Welcome to Peterson Family Farm. Uh, this vlog today is going to be about irrigating. And uh, I didn't quite get everything filmed uh, that I wanted to film, but I'm gonna go ahead and try to explain uh, some of the things that are going on right now. Um, this is on the farm that we're leasing for a year. There's a, a family from New York that bought this uh, 600 acres and uh, they're gonna move here next year to farm it. Um, but we're farming it for them for a year until they move here. So we're doing some different things uh, this year than we've ever done before. Um, our dad has flood irrigated before, so he's kind of been teaching us the ropes of what to do. Um, we haven't been perfect by any means. Uh, we've had to move a lot of pipe twice and uh, the, the, the furrows and whatnot, they aren't, they aren't perfect, but we are getting the corn watered. Um, and, uh, and also, yeah, our planter isn't a three point hitch planter, so it, it couldn't get all the way up to the pipe on every other uh, row. So that's why there's these gaps here with weeds. Um, but you can see the water coming out of the pipe. I'm gonna show you a little bit of um, uh, kind of how we set all this up. Um, but first, uh, you're gonna watch a little bit of Nathan and Kendall working on the irrigation pivots back at the home farm. Nathan, save it, it's falling into the pond. All right, we back the pump. Well, the 730, this is the 730's one of the summer jobs, right into the lagoon. Uh, so this is the pump that we put a new engine on this year. We're gonna hook it up today, which means now we gotta connect uh, to this pipe that runs to the underground that goes out off to the pivot. We gotta connect here, well, my pointing is off, to, uh, to that pipe there. Next step is airing up tires. This little corn plant is holding on for dear life. Well, the sidekick got its first dirt on it and its first oil, so it's yep. nice and uh, initiated now. Initiated into the Peterson farm. This little box in the back is nice for things that would otherwise blow away, like my mineral bag there. I went to pasture right before coming out here because it was on the way. Dropped off some mineral. Grow corn, grow! Nathan, I dare you to try to try to put it in drive with the uh, park brake on. Do it. That's a foul whistle. It's like a ref calling you out saying, like saying you can't do that. Foul. All right, y'all know what this is? This is a pivot. We're out here checking pivots. Um, main thing we do is check the oil level in the gearboxes. Uh, this is the day after a nice rain, and so all the other days have been 95, so we thought we'd be really smart if we did this on a not 95 degree day. However, the wind is blowing like 20 mile an hour. And it was worse this morning. Yeah, I so think. it seems like it's slowed down a little bit. So we did the first pivot this morning, and then this is a pivot number two. So, take this nut out the top. Um, and then this one on the bottom, loosen it up and um, some water drains out the bottom. And then once you get to where it's just oil, uh, you close or tighten the nut. And then you pour in oil to the top so that it's at a good working level. Okay, I filled it up to where it just barely overflowed. There's the oil jug that I poured it in. I do not use this tiny little spout. I just take the cap off. There's Nathan doing one there. Does this one need any oil, Nathan? No, it was already full. It actually out on me. Wow, a full one. This saves us some time. Yay! There's the oil can Nathan's using. Oil can what? Name the movie reference, people. We're we're from Kansas, so we make the Wizard of Oz jokes. We don't we don't like it when other people make Wizard of Oz jokes, but we get to. This corn is uh, the rotation was uh, wheat last year, and then double crop soybeans. 
that's why it has this really good cover and now it's corn and it'll be a full circle of irrigated corn here so parts of it we're probably going to plant a cover crop and parts of it we're just going to probably graze the corn stalks so we got options with this field because it's so close to home but all right, we're on tower two out of seven. Nathan left a wrench at the last tower. The walk of shame back. I didn't deserve to take the sidekick back. The other thing that we'll do to get the, before we get the pivot running is check all these nozzles and kind of flush them uh, so that if any of them are plugged, we'll fix it before it's time to run it around the circle first time. Uh, what kind of maintenance people with newer pivots do? See there, the oil starts coming instead of water, so now I'll close it back up. I'm not sure what kind of maintenance people with newer pivots do, but we have old pivots, so we do this kind of stuff. We did, however, get a new pump uh, for our lagoon pivot this year. Uh, so it'll pump the water out of the lagoon to the other pivot, the one that we did this morning. So most, almost all of them have this little pipe here. Some of them have living things in there. Other years, I remember mice crawling out at me. We've seen a snake in the past before, but um, gotta watch out for that. So check. Most of these U-joints have been replaced because our pivots are like 30 plus years old. It's a habit to kind of keep an eye on them, make sure the rubber, uh, rubber pieces in there we can replace them now instead of in the middle there's of the four u joints bad. there's four u joints on each one and then when we're going between towers we try to see if any of the drop nozzles have broken off in the wind over the winter this is a drop nozzle how much is this corn going to yield nathan Three hundred thousand bushels sorry we're really raising the um, carry out we're going to raise three hundred thousand bushel an acre corn all right another thing that's been going on uh, this week is we've been uh, grooving this uh, flood irrigated cornfield that we're uh, renting for a year and so uh, this is a very new process for us so basically uh, it just makes a, a groove makes a furrow uh, in between the rows of corn so then you can uh, Put a pipe at the end of the field and then uh, water flows down each one of these rows and the groove keeps it from crossing over to a different row because you want each row to get the same amount of water so that's kind of how it works you don't want to turn to the left or the right or you'll track down six rows of corn All right, so we're back on the rented farm now. Uh, you can see here, um, there's a ridge that we built all the way along here. Uh, and so we took a three point blade and, and bladed all the dirt one way to form that ridge. That way the water doesn't uh, run back this way into the ditch. We want it to run that way toward the creek downhill in each row. And so this pipe obviously has holes in it um, every 36 inches or so, which doesn't really match up with our 30 inch planter. So that's kind of a mess, uh, but uh, it does get down most of the rows and uh, it's pretty windy today. Uh, but Nathan and I have been out here since about six this morning, uh, laying down these pipe. Uh, actually, th this pipe here was already here. We didn't get uh, putting this pipe filmed, um, but the other half of the field, we've been laying pipe this morning. And so I'll show you a little bit of that. Um, but basically, uh, we're pumping uh, water from underground. Uh, this field has water rights and a pump. So you pump water from underground. It runs down this pipe, uh, comes out the holes, and we do about 48 rows at a time is what we're doing right now, uh, where water comes out and, and goes down the rows and uh, waters the corn. The, the pump fills the whole length of the pipe with water. And then to have enough flow, 
you only open a certain amount of gates at a time. So you might do like three 30 foot sections or four 30 foot sections. And these, yeah. are, these are the gates here. And so you need enough flow that it pushes the water all the way to the other end. So then you watch and once the water reaches the other end, then you open the next section and go back and close. This, this system uh, needs updated. They're kind of, uh, it's an older system. It was pretty fancy back in the day. This but, whole farm was very fancy back in the day. Um, so we're making it, making it work for this year, but hopefully it'll be updated soon. By the new owners. evaporation laws but it works in certain areas and it's kind of the cheapest way of doing things I need to get that oh. the most popular form of irrigation is a center pivot especially in the Midwest because they can go over uh, hills more and they're just really uh, flexible in what they can do and they they take maintenance of the different parts on them but you, it's things you can do more in the off season and then they're less labor intensive. So center pivots are the water goes to the middle and then they, they circle around sprinkler systems like you see around a lot. Well, and we have two of them. Yeah, and that's what you've seen in some of our vlogs and videos. And then um, the third kind is the most expensive but potentially can have really good returns. Especially here in Kansas. Yeah, especially where there's um, evaporation um, and that's subsurface drip irrigation and uh, you essentially lay drip tape underneath the ground and um, it works pretty good for like no tillage um, because you actually can't you have to be really careful deep tilling because your drip tapes down there but you can just put on the water you need and it goes straight into the ground and there's pretty much no evaporation and um, you can also put on your, put on nitrogen through there. And uh, it's a really efficient way of doing things, but it's more cost up front. Um, and you have to be careful, like in really, really dry climates, you could have trouble sprouting your seed because when your tapes are 18 inches below the ground, the water is where the roots will get it, but not necessarily where a planted seed will. So some people in really dry climates, like where it never rains, still like over the top sprinklers, but they just do it in more efficient ways. So there's lots of different technology in irrigation, but those are kind of the three main types. All right, so here's our stack of pipe we've been getting from. There's a couple different uh, spacings here. And so it's not ideal for our planter and what we're doing. We're just kind of passing through it, but we should be able to put some water on the corn. All right, we're almost to the end of the field here. Both Nathan and I are getting tired. We're not as young as we used to be. Definitely a good workout. Filming and lifting pipe. Yes, I know I'm wearing a black shirt, but we were up early this morning, and, but I'll probably change my shirt here. It's only like 8.30, uh, but it's getting hot already. Uh, so I think we've weighed <laughs> close to, probably close to 100 pipe um, on this field. And uh, it's a lot of work, but uh, hopefully it pays off. together. Alright, we 
made it to the end of the field. Got our cap put on here. Look at that corn. Grow, corn, grow. And it's gonna pound a T-post in here to make sure the cap doesn't come off. I'm sure that's the most professional way to do it right there.